what it's designed to do. It just was not capable of operating with any useful payload at that altitude. As well as being able to operate up high, the Chinook is just as good down low. It was designed to float like a boat and can land on water for special operations. These elite forces have adapted their Chinooks with long-range tanks and added weapons and classified electronics to this remarkable aircraft. Because the Chinook is an extremely large aircraft, it requires a crew of four. Probably the most important aspect of flying this aircraft is proper crew coordination. There are pilots up front, however, probably the two most important individuals in the aircraft would be the flight engineer and the crew chief. Those individuals are responsible for securing loads, calling us into uh, landing zones, and uh, maintaining clearance of such a large aircraft. Like all pilots, Major Jones still has that passion for flight that started when he was a boy. Well, flying a helicopter is something I've always wanted to do since I was a child, and uh, flying at the speed of sound is, is certainly a thrill, but uh, I think there's nothing like flying on a deck, you know, right on top of the trees, at the Earth's surface, under night vision goggles with poor illumination. I don't, I don't think it gets any more challenging than that. There are several different versions of the Chinook. And the latest is being developed as a digital aircraft with computers and digital screens. It is hoped that these upgrades will extend the life of the Chinook for another 20 years, and it will successfully integrate into the digital battlefield. However, upgrading pilots is not so simple. Old dogs like me that have been flying this thing for quite a while are used to all the old analog systems. The young kids coming up today have grown up with computers. They've accommodated it through learning through the process. The learning curve to transition to this type of environment is more difficult for me because I learned on something else and I have what we call negative habit transfer trying to overcome that. Crosby's philosophy is if you want to test this system equitably, go to the mall and get the kid that's been playing the video games all day and come see how he does with it. With the United States moving towards a fully digitized army, will they still be able to fight alongside their less technologically advanced allies? We're going to work with allies, we're going to work with friends, and it doesn't make their systems ineffective if they're not digitized. It will reduce their effectiveness, as we have. That's why we're striving to digitize our platforms, because we see it as an, an effectiveness enhancement. Meanwhile, on the other side of the Atlantic, the British Royal Navy is also working towards creating its own digitized helicopter force. In Gulf War II, the closest ally that worked alongside the United States was the United Kingdom. The Royal Navy has its own fleet of combat helicopters, some among the most advanced in the world. Like the U.S. helicopters, they have excellent designs. But in the race towards digitization, some still lag behind. One successful aircraft in need of an upgrade is the Royal Navy's Mark 8 Lynx helicopter. The Lynx holds the world speed record at 400 kilometers per hour and is designed as an anti-surface and anti-submarine helicopter. The Lynx is the, uh, the world's fastest production helicopter, and it's very, very agile. It has a, a special rotor head which allows it to be uh, very aerodynamic in comparison to other helicopters. Makes it uh, a wonderful aircraft to fly as a pilot. It's uh, especially agile. It's uh, not very forgiving in that it's, it, it is very twitchy, but uh, if it's, it's like driving a sports car in a comparison to a lot of other helicopters. It's like driving a bit of a bus. A revolutionary British-designed rotor system allows the helicopter to fly faster because the paddle shape of the blades improves the airflow over their surface and delays the onset of blade stall. Keeping flight crew fully trained for war is a never-ending task.
Today, 702 Squadron is being briefed on an exercise to fire live skewer missiles from the Mark 8 Lynx. Okay, good morning, gentlemen. The aim of this morning's brief is to uh, fire and to brief for the firing of 15 live sea skewer weapons. Each crew today will fire up. This is a rare occasion to fire live missiles, so the crew listen attentively. The targets you are firing against are 20 nautical miles to the northwest of Aberporth in Cardigan Bay, and it consists of four 100-foot barges with radar reflective targets attached to them. In addition, they have... Sisku is our primary anti-surface weapon. Um, we have 15 missiles to release. Some of them are reaching their end of their life, and we're also trying to ensure that some of the younger people on the unit are getting some experience of firing their missiles. Skewer is a, a semi-active, uh, medium-range missile, and its primary aim is to uh, damage and uh, set on fire, if you like, uh, smaller fast patrol boats and smaller frigates, corvette size. The Lynx crew of two consists of a pilot and an observer. It's my role to detect the enemy uh, shipping, uh, to classify it so that we know whether they're actually firing at the right target, and then to deploy the weapon. To do that, I'd eliminate it with the radar, and then using the radar, I guide the missile onto the target. The Sea Skewer is an extremely effective missile. Its high explosive warhead only detonates once it penetrates the skin of the ship, creating internal fires. flown with live skewer many times in Bosnia and Kosovo in the 90s. However, it's the first time I've ever fired one. It's very exciting, actually. A little nervous, obviously, but it's a very good uh, high feeling of satisfaction when the missile drops off, the motors go, and on further inspection, when we had a look at the targets, it hit exactly where we expected it to hit. The mission was a success, with the skewer blasting a hole through the target. In addition to the skewer missile, the Lynx can also carry torpedoes and depth charges for anti-submarine warfare. It has recently acquired a new half-inch caliber machine gun for use against fast-moving craft. But for all the Mark 8 Lynx's effectiveness in combat, it is yet to be digitized for the future battlefield. To enable us to be part of the digital battlefield, we need to have the same equipment and the compatible equipment with all our uh, NATO and other allies that we are likely to work with. The other aircraft within the fleet arm are getting to the digital battle space. That includes the Seeking Mark 7 and the Merlin. We're a little way behind that, but the uh, upgrades we are expecting to get in the next uh, few years should enable us to catch up and be, port be part of that integrated picture. Some Royal Navy helicopters have entered the digital battlefield and it is the Sea King, for many years workhorse of the Royal Navy, that now houses the technology to bring the fleet into the 21st century. Although the Sea King is over 30 years old, the new Mark 7 version has been radically improved electronically. 